All right, well, welcome to VO Tech Simplified Live. And of course, we're coming to you on both Facebook and YouTube. So it's always super helpful if you throw a little comment in there so that I know that you're there and that you're hearing this, that you're seeing this. And uh, we're gonna talk about RMS today and, and anything you wanna talk about. So it's, it's not limited to that. That's where we're starting. And I'm gonna just, uh, so it's always helpful, of course, when I, when you, hey, Lisa Baker, thank you very much, loud and clear, good. <laughs> I did one earlier today and I had, a, had some reverb going on. All right, Dale, super helpful, thank you. And uh, so yeah, it's always helpful. I'm always doing things, I'm always testing things, trying trying new things, different things, and uh, and every once in a while something doesn't work. So, so helpful when you're doing that. And today we're gonna talk about RMS and noise floor and some things I see people do and answer questions. If you have other tech questions, you can actually go ahead and uh, throw it in there. And, you know, right now we we're seeing both. Uh, oh, I am seeing, I've got, I, I have to adjust one of my, one the first message is going off the screen there. But anyway, it's working good, working good. So <laughs> I love all the side conversations too. So be sure to keep them up. It's good to see you all. All right. So RMS, what is it? Root mean square. It's a mathematical thing. And what it tries to do is represent how loud something is. Now, it's a very old standard. It's been around, I want to say 30 years. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I could be off by a decade, but it's been a long time. It's been a minute, as they say. And in that minute, uh, better standards have come across that actually do a better mathematical job to represent the volume of audio. Now, for all of us that have started off, say, in the audiobook world, as opposed to us, voice, the voiceover crowd, and the, we, have, we always have a mix on these things, when it comes to audiobooks, they're back in the Stone Ages, and they're using RMS, and they're actually even using, there are two standards for RMS, and it's kind of like, hey, when I'm driving, my car, my speedometer has miles per hour, and it has kilometers per hour. Now, I don't know why it has both. I guess they're just, they think, anyway, it doesn't really matter. The distance that I travel, if I'm going to run for a mile, is the same distance, no matter how I'm calculating it. Uh, am I going to do it in meters? Am I going to do it in yards? The distance traveled is the same. And that's the same with audio, meaning that while there are two ways to handle RMS, legit, both approved standards that have been around for a long time. ACX uses one of them. So first thing, I'm going to assume that you're doing audiobooks or working audiobooks. And even if you're working voiceover, I recommend you make this change. So I use our uh, RX, Isotope RX, to do my measurements. It's a great tool. It has something here called Waveform Statistics. And I'll zoom in on that so you can see that. There's our Waveform Statistics. And I can look at this piece of audio here. And it, with that, I can tell how loud it is based on this measurement. Now, like all measurements, it's a mathematical representation of the overall volume. It is not the volume, it is a measurement of them, and it is not perfect, perfect. Not bad, but not perfect, perfect. And so one of the things we have to do, because RX, there's, I told you there's two standards. And so if you're using RX to measure this, be sure and, and you're, especially if you're doing audiobooks, but even if you're not, I still recommend you do this. Go into the preferences here and be sure to uncheck this where it says calculate RMS using AES, AES 17. That should be unchecked. And, and what, if you'll notice right over here, these numbers where it says 18 point, wait, 27.59, that's the one we want. Total RMS level. If I go over here to the calculate, and I, you watch that number over to my left there where it's 27.59. When we click that, it's now 24.58. It's 3.01 dB quieter with it checked versus unchecked. And so all your numbers will be wrong if you send this into ACX. Some people get away with it because of, if they were uh, sending in audiobooks and they were just barely within the specs, like they were 22 point something, with that checked, it'll still work, but it's it's not right, all right? So just remember, there's a checkbox. Also, this checkbox is there because of me. There are some things in IRX that are there because of me, and this is one of them. The uh, mouth the click is another. It's there because in 2014, uh, RX4 came out, 
and they had been using the old standard for it, and they upgraded to AES-17, uh, which was the, the alternate one. And the film industry and the TV industry was using AES-17. There was one before that, and, and ACX was using the old one, still is today, all, this, all these years later. I don't understand why, over my pay grade. And so at, at first there was no, this, didn't, this checkbox didn't exist. And so as soon as RX4, I'd been using RX2, 3, and when it came out, I, I all of a sudden noticed all my calculations were wrong. They were coming out 3 dB different than what I expected. I filed a bug report. I just thought it was a bug. I didn't really know at that time. There were two legitimate ways of measuring things. Just like today, there are different ways to measure soda or soda pop, depending on where you are in the country, or pop. And, uh, and so because you can have different measurements that are legit, they added this check mark in 2014 in four, I think it was 40A, I think that's what they called it. And I got to, the, I, if you even go far enough back in the RX group, if you're not in our RX group, join it. But uh, I, I, I had a little, hey, I got my checkbox. And they just threw it in here in an odd sp space because they happen to have this space right here. This was supposed to go down here. All the checkboxes are supposed to be lined up. All right, that's a little side there. Be sure that that's off. Otherwise your calculations will be wrong. And then we have this noise floor, noise floor thing going on. Oh, calm, clear. Hey, uh, I was in Metro Detroit uh, about two weeks ago. So they, they have this situation here where we have noise floor that we have to deal with in virtually everything we're doing. It's good to know your noise floor, even if you're doing voiceover. Although, I don't know, clients don't say, hey, make sure your noise floor is below 60 dB or something like that. That's not how it works for voiceover. They just expect your, your no, uh, where you have no uh, voice that it's quiet. And it can be anything you want. Minus 60 would be about the minimum I'd ever do for anything because even that can be heard. And, and if you're newer to audiobooks, just know, ACX requires, and almost all the publishers, a noise floor that's below minus 60. But that's a minimum. That'd be like saying, hey, you know, you only need to be four feet to ride this ride if you go to Disneyland or you go to Magic Mountain. Well, if you're four, six, that's fine. You can, you can ride that ride. If you're taller than a certain point, you can, you can ride the ride. It's not that you have to be four foot to ride it, generally. I don't know of any ride that's a specific height that you have to be. Um, so that's the same with audio. Minus 60 is acceptable for ACX. I'd never do it because people can hear that in a lot of situations, but you can get away with it. You'll pass spec. Uh, one of the things to know about ACX specifications, they're all volume related and while they, and they only spot check for real quality. And then they let all sorts of things through. And because they spot check, I've had people get through 20 books before they actually found, had a book rejected. And then the interesting thing is we checked previous books. They had all been the same. Because it baffled somebody. Hey, 20 is the most I've ever seen. Uh, a lot of times it's like six or eight books they'll get in. And then they'll find out a book gets rejected. We check their other stuff. And we figure out, oh, all the other ones should have been rejected. But it, it's the same when I drive on the freeway here. Uh, there's a speed limit, 65. I maybe, I don't, uh, don't quote me on this. I'll deny I ever said it. But I maybe, I've, I've gone over the speed limit a couple times in my life. Now, every time I've gotten pulled over, it's kind of like I, I had this little thought in my head. Yeah, I probably deserve to be pulled over 30 times before this, 50 times before this, 450 times before this. Yeah, every so often they catch me and they give me a ticket. And, I, you know, I probably average the ticket every five to seven years or so for going a little too fast when I was a younger guy. I haven't had a ticket in 15, 20 years now for going too fast. That's just, and that's not because I haven't deserved it on occasion, okay? So that's how ACX is, it, I, I don't want to say they don't care. They have minimum quality standards, just assuming that people are using the lowest c common denominator DAWs. They just want more books on there. They're not worried about them being high, high quality. They're worried about them getting through. So what's the noise floor? The noise floor is all the area where there is no dialogue. Now, most of you, and depending on your DAW, if you're newer, you'll have this waveform view. RX supports that, and I can switch back and forth. I love the spectrogram. It's like an X-ray 
It's like a CAT scan for your audio. You get to see all sorts of things. And by the way, total aside, if you really want to understand RX and get the most of it, I do have a course called RX Jumpstart, and it goes through all the things you need to know to produce great quality voiceover or audio books and have RX do the job of fine tuning it. That's on VOJumpstart.com. But uh, it's really, I have a, this thing's, yeah, I've had this for a couple, many years here. And RX Jumpstart, and you can have all this stuff. You'll know it. You'll know how it works. You can use it easily. But today we're, not, we're talking about noise floor. So when I look at it in waveform view, it's easy to tell. This is where my dialogue is. This before and after, this is going to be my noise floor. And what I'm going, and one of the things, there's some tools out there that will calculate ACX check will count, second opinion will calculate. By the way, Audacity will, will calculate it. When they're calculating your noise floor, just know all they're doing is looking at the first few seconds before your dialogue starts, the last few seconds after your dialogue ends. And if, you're, if your audio is horrible in here, it won't pick it up. So if you want to, if you want to just pass specs, hey, make sure this is right. Make sure this is right. That'll get you through the automated checkers. Then if they spot check and there's a problem in here, then hey, that'll get rejected too. But hey, they don't show that. I don't get pulled over for speeding every time either. Uh, so, but you do want to measure here. And when we switch back to spectrogram view, you can obviously tell. And I'm going to take this spot right here and I'll zoom in on it. And note, what does this say? This says my noise floor is at minus 81.89. So I'll call that minus 82, that's close enough. And so, so here's what happens. People go, wow, my room's great. It's at minus 81. It's like, uh, your room might be at minus 81 uh, or 82 or something like that, whatever it is. And it might not be. Why? Well, here's the dirty secret. You can't just measure the room by recording something or just recording the room without some reference dialogue. When we measure this reference dialog that's here, we find out that that's at 26.81, right? 26, we're just gonna call it 27. Doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's in order to measure, we need to get it up to about minus 20. I like minus 19 and a half, but if you're plus or minus one there, you'll be okay. I'll just, just say minus 20, minus 19, right in there, it's fine. So I'm going to add some gain to this and not worry about the peaks. And if I add some gain, I'll add seven to it. And when I do that to everything, it's brought up the uh, dialogue and I'll measure the dialogue again by selecting it. So now that's minus 19, minus 19.8. Zoom in there so you can see that. There's the total RMS, okay? And then now my dialogue is, is up, to, up to standard and so is the noise. So now when I go over here and I measure this, now I'm at minus 75. And what really happens is now I'm getting an accurate level of noise here. And I'm, this is clean noise. This is where there is no dialogue. There's no, there's no breaths. There's no chair squeaks. There's no things like that. And I'll, I'll often spot check a couple places. I might go here. This is not bad either. That's at 75. Go over to the beginning screen here. This is at minus 77. That's really good. This is really good. When it's brought up to the final, it's great, okay? Because now I do like being in the low 70s, low 70, 75-ish for my total RMS on the uh, noise floor, and that'll do great. So in other words, you need to make sure you're measuring your noise floor in places that, are, that have no dialogue. That one's 77, that's great. Now, if I put it where there's this little, uh, this mouth noise there, tick, then you'll see my sample peak now blew the specs. I can get away with that within dialogue. I can't get away with that. If I go over here, there's a little tick here and that will, that's not that big a deal because it's really small. If I had some mouth noise in there, I, it may bring down my specs and get my sample peak. You can see the sample peak there is at 57. Make sure I zoom in on that so you can see that. That's at 57. ACX will throw that out. Oh, they'll kick it back. Their automated system will kick it back. I need to have both numbers below minus 60. Uh, this one's better. Total RMS. This is the peaks. And if you have both of them below minus 60, they'll go, cool, you're good. And, you know, it's pretty liberal. I mean, it's amazing 
the stuff they pass. But I I, I had to, I, I, I don't know why. I was driving someplace. I think I was going to my mom's about 40 minutes away. And I think I was going about 80. And the thing is, I was getting passed a lot. I'm here in Southern California. And I was really going, darn, I, you know, I, I, I'm feeling like uh, I'm flying along here at 80. And I was just getting passed a lot. Traffic, I mean, it's a 65 mile per hour zone. A cop came by, a highway patrol came by. He didn't bother me at 80 because there were so many people going faster than me. It's like, wow, that's really bizarre um, that we could all. So usually it's 10 over in most places at 75. But, you know, there were enough cars going much, much faster that I was just a total non-target in that day. Now, could he have pulled me over? Of course he could have. For 80, 15 over, that's that's enough to get pulled over. I didn't that time, but it, it amazed me. And that's kind of like ACX. Some days, depending on what else is going on, they're not going to take the time to send your audio back. Now, let me take another file. Let's look at another one. And then I'll look for questions here. Okay. And so uh, I just redid my room. I haven't started using RX, but I wanted to know, listen to a sample of mine. Yeah, of course. Um, and then uh, if you, if, if, if some, yeah. If you start the course, it, it, it lays it all out. It's step by step. It assumes you don't know anything about it. I think you'll be blown away at how good that is and how easy it makes it for you to not only hit specs. I mean, anybody can hit specs. A lot of tools out there to hit specs. It's hitting the specs and sounding great that is the big deal. So here's another piece of audio here. I'm going to go to the beginning and see if there's any space. There's not a lot of space there. Um, and I'm going to go to the end and try to find something. And so if I measure this one, now first thing I do, I measure across the dialogue. I want to get some dialogue as a reference point. And when I do that, you'll see this one, let me zoom in here, is at 18.5 for the total RMS. So that's really good. That is full production value. That's a little on the hot side. That's really good for voiceover, by the way. Voiceover is usually a little hotter than audiobooks. That's a good thing. And when you now I just need to find some places where I can find some clean noise. Isn't that weird? Clean noise. What it means is some noise that doesn't have breath, that doesn't have uh, any dialogue, of course, and I can measure it. And so this spot right here is at minus 68, but the peaks are on the high side. So that, that'll, that'll work in a voiceover context. Now, I have to admit, I would take some of that out. And if I go all the way to the beginning here, you can see there's some noise here. And that's at 65, so it's below 60. That'll work. That'll work all day long. And by the way, I would, I would, uh, if I were dealing with the room tone, I would say, ah, that's a little bit too tight for me, for my taste. I don't like it that tight. But I can see this would be easy with RX to clean that up. So let me look at questions here first, and then based on the questions, um, dun, dun, dun. yeah. So your the specs at the major publishing houses. So here's the weird thing. Major publishing houses are going to be looking at your raw audio. So they'll, they'll, this one was raw. Let me take it back to the initial state. So this one was raw. So this, so what they're going to do is they're going to take your audio and they're going to look at it and they're going to say, well, let me bring this whole track up to, a, and they're going to add in this case, I'm going to use my gain tool and they'll add 7 dB. And then they're going to measure this and that's where they're going to want you to be, where if it's minus 65 or so, that'll be okay. If it's 70, that'll be even better. So somewhere in the 65 to 70 range is what, what they'll be, what they'll, they'll take things that are less. And some of it depends on how established you are with them. I've seen people that are very established get away with stuff that a new person wouldn't necessarily get away with. But um, just bring your audio up as if you were producing it yourself and I'm not like if, oh, by the way, see, you'll notice that in order to get this, this test audio up to spec for the total RMS, uh, I'm going over on the peaks. I'll drill in here. So when I zoom in, my peaks are over. I don't worry about that for this test. All I'm trying to do is see how much gain I need to add. Let me add this, put this right here. I have to figure out how much gain I need to add to get my total track into that range. And once I've done that, I'm good. 
So you definitely want to be better than 65 or so, but that's after you bring it up. So in this case, this would totally work. But if I take this other file here, um, one, the major publishers aren't going to have us do fully produced in most cases. I do have a couple of people that do, but most don't. And so I would take this and I would be going and using Spectral Denoise and I'd be doing something in here. I'll pull this up. It's on the wrong, wrong screen. And I would learn that and I would take that and I would definitely do be doing something like this and I'd be bringing down this and few, and then I would test that and I would measure it and that's even better. And by so doing, undoing, and then I would run it on the whole, whole track and I might do a little more on that, but you'd watch right down here, just clean that up a little bit. And so now if I measure it, oh, uh, then what do I get? Now I'm 72. I still don't like, uh, there's some stuff in the peaks there that I would go through and deal with. So I'm not gonna go over all that today in terms of noise reduction and how to do that. But the reality is this one would be easy to do uh, if I just readjust some settings here because it's it overall is fine, but, uh, but I just have to go through and use a noise reduction. That's that's a project for another day. Okay, so Larry, did that uh, answer your question there? Um, would I use a normalized function? Well, you could. You could. Uh, by the way, so no, I wouldn't do that. So let me answer Chris's question um, because this one blew the peaks. First off, I would have a limiter. I would have all that adjusting. There's. There's. Let me back up. There's two things. If I already have it in RX, I'm gonna do one thing, but I would be using a compressor and a limiter uh, over in my DAW before I ever get it to RX to do that. I think, and it does depend. Uh, you can use the leveling tool, the loudness control tool here in RX, that works. I prefer in the really good DAWs, uh, you even get better quality out of the really good DAWs. So if I'm in Studio One, I'm gonna be doing it all there to get it up to final specs before I get it here. That's a compressor and a limiter and some volume. Um, I may have to add some gain, compressor and limit it, and then that'll totally nail it without having to deal with it here, okay? So normalize, no. Here's the problem with normalize. Normalize looks at, oh, there's a normalize here. Here's normalize. Normalize, let me take uh, this back to the initial state. So we'll undo here, all right. And then it's easier to see if we're gonna, going to normalize. So this peak is the, the tallest peak in this, in this piece of audio. If I want to normalize here, then say I want to normalize for if I'm doing an audio book, my, I like I minus 3.4 is so what I do for that. And let's say I do that, okay? No, by the way, I just took up one thing. Hold on. See, don't do what I did. Be sure you have nothing selected. And then when you do that, that will normalize. So that took the tallest peak, which by the way, can be on the bottom or the top. And if I zoom in here, let me see if I can zoom in and so you can see it. And I'll zoom in. Yeah, it's really, it's what, uh, what you'll notice is right over here. Yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> when I do that, in order to get the scale there, it wants to move over. But what you're gonna see is I set it at three, four. That's the one I think. I'd have to, to look at them. I can zoom in and out and I can see it. But point being, when I go to 3.4 or 3, 4, then it, that doesn't bring up my RMS totally uh, so that I, I'm not going to hit the overall specs even though I handled the peaks. And, and watch this. Let me zoom out here. So if I did that, whether I did 3, 3.4, everything's related to one peak in this file and then it is going to adjust the whole rest of it. But when I do that, we'll go over here. Now my uh, stats for the total are not making it. So now my stats there are at uh, 24. So the, the uh, there it is, it's minus 3.4. By the way, most of you know, and this is in the RX Jumpstart, you can click on this little thing. There's the peak that it used right there to get to minus 3.4. There's a there's this this little measuring tool allows you to find it, so it's pretty cool on that. So, what you have is a situation that if I do it here with normalization, that's just looking at one peak, and based on that, adjusting the whole file based on one peak, and that doesn't, I mean, can it work? Yeah, it will work. In some cases, you can make that work, 
but that's not how I would do it. You do it also if I later come in and just punch in this little bit and then I normalize just this little bit. Let me find something. Watch this. If I take this section here and I normalize it because I had a punch in right there and then I do this again, now look at that, how big that is compared to where it was. It's going to sound way louder than the original. And so it's not going to fit in that in that spot because now normalize is working on a smaller subsection instead of working on the whole file. So as a rule, I don't ever normalize. Uh, you don't need to if you have good tools. If you have a decent DAW that has the, the tools, you can do it all there and life is better. And you can also then do a punch in later because you have a revision request or I made a mistake and I can have it come out and be the exact same if I'm using the same tools uh, when I do the punch in or I have to replace something where normalization won't work at all because it's based on finding one peak over the whole thing. And uh, so, da -da -da -da. Uh, so Chris, I hope that answers your question there, but there are much, much better ways to hit all the specs than to be than to normalize. And I, it really, it's an old school thing. We used to use it all the time back in the day, and there are some cases where if I'm testing something, I'll normalize just because it's faster to do something and get something to a certain level where I care about the peaks. But uh, a combination of some gain, a compressor, and a limiter, far superior if you have a good compressor. Uh, like uh, some tools, some of the free tools, the, they have a compressor. Remember, burgers are all the same, right? I mean, you like you like a burger from McDonald's. It's the same as the burger from In-N-Out, and it's the same from the burger at Five Guys, or it's the same for The Habit, or whatever uh, Whataburger, I think it's called. They're all the same, right? Uh, not if you really love burgers. They're not. They are all have their own pluses and minuses, and you could argue whether is In-N-Out better than Whataburger, or you, you can argue about that. There's not one answer. But what I can tell you, guaranteed, when it comes to compressors, they're like burgers. There's good ones and there's just okay ones. So I do, I, you know, I have to be careful. I could get frustrated. But people who, and, and people, as your ears continue to mature over time, this is one thing that happens. If you ever record music, you are forced to isolate all sorts of different sounds from certain instruments and parts of their instruments. And you're sitting listening for just countless hours, and then you listen to them all mixed together, and then you still in your mind can take them apart and listen to each individual thing, listen to them combined. So someone starts doing audiobooks, and they just don't know what they don't hear, and that's fine. That's normal. If I'm going to learn good coffee, and the only thing I've ever had is coffee with sugar and cream like a Frappuccino. That really isn't coffee. That's a milk drink with the, that was in a room that had coffee. And that's I. That's what I used to like. I really never liked coffee. I liked uh, I like cream and sugar. Really, is all it came down to, and the caramel and all the sweet stuff. That was me. One day, I decided to go to a hundred percent black uh, cold brew coffee, and I did it really literally, literally in a day. I just made a decision. I decided there's enough people around the world that drink coffee straight black that if they could do it, I could do it. And actually now what's happening is I know what good coffee tastes like because over a few years, I've drank nothing but black. I shouldn't say nothing. I've drank 98% black coffee. I've been on the road a couple of times and had a Starbucks and, oh, this is still good. I really like it. I enjoy the cream and sugar and other stuff. But I went to 100% black a few years ago and I'm starting to taste it. Now, I've done the same thing with chocolate where I started with I really didn't like milk chocolate and I didn't, I definitely didn't like dark chocolate. And Trader Joe's had what I call a gateway chocolate. Don't try their chocolate truffle. It's a bad, their dark chocolate truffle. Do not try that because if you do, you'll go, wow, that's really good. That's dark chocolate. And then from that, I worked my way in and now uh, I have some really good 70% and I have some 80% for those that are into that. And what happens is after a while, you start knowing what good chocolate tastes like if you do enough. Same with your ears. You can get away in the beginning with using a compressor that's in, in Audacity. It has terrible compressors, but nobody hears them to begin with. And they, the ACX check, or no, the ACX normalize that's in that tool, while they don't 
advertise it this way. It's a compressor. Now it's a compressor and, but it is a compressor. And so it's doing the same thing, but it's it's about hitting the specs, not about sounding great. And uh, some of the other DAWs want to sound great first, and there's just a black art to it practically. It's It's very advanced math to get it right. And it's not the base level stuff. I've been, yeah, I can get on a whole aside on that kind of thing. So, but people don't hear it at first and it's a couple years later after they start. And there are even engineers out there where I kind of think, oh, you know, that guy understands how to work the tech, but he definitely doesn't have great ears because if he did, he wouldn't recommend some of the things or she wouldn't recommend some of the things they recommend. I just, I can tell that they don't have, either they don't have great hearing or they don't have great equipment and rooms and haven't been in great reference situations because if they did, there are certain tools they just wouldn't recommend, but that's a different discussion. All right, let me look back here the, at the uh, at the notes here. So so let's recap. Noise floor, it's, it's what's out here, but it's not where, meaning it's not where the dialogue is, but it can't, you just can't take and record your room and you can't just go ahead and do the equivalent of this, which is record the room. Let me turn on the spectrogram here and record the room where I just haven't said anything. That might be fine, but what you have to do is you do have to have some reference dialogue in there. Get that up to spec. I'm going to call it m minus 19 to minus 20. You want to measure this and figure out what's the delta. You need to have a tool to measure it. And if you're measuring it and you do that, I'm going to do this here. Zoom in. So that's at minus 23 because of where I have it right now. Oh, because I normalized it. <laughs> See, by the, you know, so I'm going to have to say, okay, this isn't, this isn't good enough. I need to add 4 dB, 3.5 dB, and there's a gain tool. Let me do that. And you're going to add some gain and, and be sure to add gain to the whole file because we need to bring up the noise as well so that everything is at that reference. I'm gonna add three to this. And when I'm done doing that, oops, I just added it to that. See, I just told you, I just did what I told you not to do. Undo is my biggest friend. I have nothing selected. Render it, it does the whole whole track. And now I can look at that track. Oh, it's not enough. So, oh no, it's, it is enough because see, I only need to measure across the dialogue. By the way, space is included in that. So if I put 10 or 20 seconds of, of silence or quiet or room tone after or before, it's gonna distort my stats. So my stats is at 29. I really should have that up another another dB there for if I'm gonna, going to uh, test it and find, figure out the noise floor. And so now I'm checking on that 19 set. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and uh, I'll zoom in there so you can see that. So it's 19.72 and there, there we go back. And now I can measure right here. And then I can get an idea of 76. Ah, oh, that's great, that's great, that's great. Works fantastic. And I could even take it out. If I wanted to go lower, I could take out all this stuff at the bottom with the RX tools. It's easy, it's easy to do. And, and, uh, and then this one, I definitely would be doing something for the noise floor as well. But that's beside the point. It's just, I wanted to give you a couple different examples so you could see different cases. And I would be able, I would be processing this and taking out some stuff. Uh, just to make life easier, okay? And um, make sure, yep. Uh, so, yes, I am absolutely looking, when I'm testing this, I, I'm not I'm not producing finished audio. If I'm going to test something, you, so Bill just said, it looks like you're ignoring the peaks that go outside the spec of minus three dB. Well, in this case, and if I'm doing voiceover, I'm only, but I, this one I, I clipped. Okay, I went over by uh, 0.61. So yes, for this test, when I'm trying to figure out the noise floor, I can easily go over it. Okay, if I have 100% raw audio, I can do that. So I do test finished audio, and then in that case, this this finished audio is at minus 18.7. And oh, let me zoom in on that. So if I have finished audio, this is at uh, minus 18.7 and minus 3.61. So in finished stuff, I wouldn't ignore the peaks. But if I have raw audio, all I need to do is take in, and you are correct, I'm going to get this into the range of between 19 and 20, minus 19 and minus 20. If ever I say the numbers, I'm always doing it's always minus uh, in this case. So once I'm there, yeah, I am ignoring the fact that this went over because I'm not listening to it. 
nor am I going to use this as my final production. It's just to figure out what the noise floor is. So you absolutely great, great observation that I am ignoring the peaks for this exercise. I'd never send it out like this. That would be dumb in my case. Um, and, and inappropriate would be a better way to say that. I would not want it to go over. And especially because I have enough of them that went over. I have 21 clip samples here. Too many. Uh, by the way, you can get away, you can get away with one or two, that kind of thing. Depending on how far apart they are, uh, you could get away with 20 of them and no one would know the difference, all right? So, but I don't do that. So yeah, I can get away with speeding as well. I've gone over the speed limit. Uh, I've rolled a stop sign once or twice in my life. I do less of that. I just have a friend that got a $200 ticket for rolling a stop sign. So it's like, ah, I really got to stop at all those stop signs, all right? Some of us have rolled a lot of stop signs in our day and depends on the neighborhood, depends on what's going on. So for testing, yeah, uh, if I'm driving on the freeway, I'm going 75 almost 100% of the time. I'm always a lawbreaker and going over, but I know what I'm doing. I know I'm taking a chance of getting pulled over and getting a speeding ticket. Yeah, where I'm at, they, they just don't ticket you for under, for anything under 10. 10 miles over, they're not going to pull me over. And then it's crazy that I can go 15 over in my area way, I mean, just most of the time, and they're not going to say anything about that, okay? So be sure, uh, if you have another question, be sure to ask it. If you have quite things you want me to cover in these sessions for next week, I'll be back next Tuesday. You also know, of course, if you really want to understand RX, go ahead and get RX Jumpstart. It's in the VOJumpstart.com site. You want a great DAW, check out Studio One. But uh, today we're just talking about noise floor and making that work and specifically for audiobooks. But I do test all this stuff as well when I'm doing voiceover. Voiceover is going to be a little hotter, but I still want the, the noise floor to be lower. And there's a lot of voiceover where I could go in here and I could go ahead and let me undo that. Hold on. If I'm doing voiceover, I can get away with taking something like this, and I'll zoom in here in a second, and I actually could black it out like that. So see, I just took that, and I'm gonna zoom in on that so you can see, that is totally blacked out. That's the sound of silence. That is the sound of outer space, I guess. I've never been to outer space. I've heard about it. Well, I've heard of how it sounds. It has virtually no sound. And that sounds funny if this space here between words is, if I take this space here and I blank it out and I blank this one out right here and I blank this out right here, it's the equivalent of walking out of a theater where I'm, I'm in the dark. So I blanked out a bunch of this stuff. So you see, you notice how dark this is here. If you have audio that's that dark, what will happen is, uh, some, a lot of people won't know, okay, remember, most people don't hear real well anyway, so that's fine. They, they, but if they're going to listen to you for an extended period of time, what happens there is they end up knowing something sounds funny, and it also doesn't sound warm. It sounds cold. Why? Because every day of their life, they've been in rooms. You are in a room right now that has some room tone, meaning it's not dead quiet. It's raining by me, so I actually can hear that there's some rain drops occasionally. But even when there's no rain, there's some noise outside my house. I can hear it. You can hear it. So there's noise in life. Life has some noise. It has noise all the time. To be in a room that's this quiet, uh, one, I, you, you can't get to this quiet. I don't know. Maybe you could if you spend millions. But, I mean, hundreds of thousands to get to this kind of level of silence. But the biggest deal is that nobody's heard that. So what do they do? They don't go, wow. Don sounds terrible. They just go, something sounds funny. And here's the thing. If they heard me with some room tone in there that's at a very low level, it'll sound normal to them. And they'll just pay attention to what I'm doing. Blacking things out ends up sounding funny. And people do this with gates and uh, some other things. Now, you can get away with that if there's going to be music behind it because then you don't have that total zero but don't gate everything, especially if you're doing uh, audio books. Even in voiceover, I, it, I, there's some, uh, some negatives. You can get quiet enough without being ridiculously quiet, and you sound better to others. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I like. It matters what the marketplace likes in terms of I want my clients to have their customers and their customers' clients 
to go, wow, that sounds great, and never to have that feeling of it doesn't, it isn't exactly right. It's just uh, you want it to be something that they, they don't have a funny feeling. Voices are one of the places where people know what things sound like better than anything else. If I play trumpet or drums, nobody knows what a trumpet or drums or drum is supposed to sound like. They know what that one sounds like. But voice, no, that's a place where even my mom hears something and goes, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't sound right. You don't sound right today. You, do you have a cold? Do you, you don't sound like yourself. Moms pick up on that all the time. When you have a little bit of a cold, your mom will pick up on it. It's because you sound a little different. And they don't know why you sound funny, but they pick up on it. All right, let me check a question here. Citizens are... <laughs> well, I probably deserve that. Um, yes. Um, anyway, I hope this is doing good. And then, um, yeah, you could run a separate track of room tone. Um, and, and if somebody blacks that out, that's fine. I don't think it's, you know, if you use RX, well, you don't need to do that. But you could. That That's totally valid. And if you're sophisticated enough to do it, um, I don't have a problem with that. So as long as you know what you're doing, first off, you can do anything you want. Not you. Not you, Larry. That's not directed at you. You in general. I don't know. We all can do whatever we want. People get away with all sorts of things. And just like I get away with speeding sometimes, uh, but I don't drive crazy. Even I, I, I'm speeding in, in situations where I'm in wide open freeway and I'm going a, a distance. And so I'm traveling maybe 40, 40 minutes and I'm at a stretch of the freeway where, you know, it's not raining. There's not a lot of traffic. The traffic around me is probably going faster uh, because seven, I'm, I'm in the 70s someplace. I, I just don't go over 80 anymore. As a young guy, I just I did drive a little fast a few times. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, but I don't do that as a rule. That's not necessary. And on this, if you're sophisticated, you can do all sorts of things. And you can. I have people that have succeeded for years doing this stuff where they're blacking things out and they're just silencing them. Here's the thing. Today, the whole rage is conversational, warm. Uh, I guarantee you that somebody sounds warmer if they have some room tone in there than when they totally black things out. They might like it better, but so what? If I like my coffee black and you just hate it that way, does it matter that I like it one way and you like it another? No. What does the mass consumer want? What sounds better to vast majorities of people and guarantee you silence is not what most want or it's not that they want it's not it doesn't have as warm of a feel and that's that at the end of the day is what most clients want the vast majority unless i'm going for a special effect they want us to sound personable ai can sound have silence in between things okay that that's but that's not where we want to go so all right so, uh, yeah, and someone like Larry, I mean, listen, there are some people also that could stand on their head, do all this stuff, quote, wrong, and their performance is so good, they still will get a lot of work. And so I'm not saying, you know, people won't get away with it, and I know you're not either. We're, we're yeah, it's like suddenly going into a vacuum. It's definitely that way. It sounds funny. and But a lot of people won't pick up on it sounding like a vacuum. They'll just kind of go, I don't know, Don doesn't then they won't even voice it out loud because it's a subtle thing. But it'd be, you know, if you have really good salad that's fresh and you have one that's kind of older, I we got a bag of chips from Trader Joe's um, and there's this kind of corn chips that we really like. And I get it, I don't know, I get them, I, I get it every so often. And we had one that had been in our pantry for maybe a month before we opened it. I wouldn't, you know, it, it's not something I have all the time, but it's, hey, we had them. And the first thing I said was, wow, these are not as fresh and crisp as the ones we normally get. And I, I have a theory that at Trader Joe's, they didn't get rotated. I happen to know what good fresh chips taste like, meaning that they're not ridiculously old. Somehow there was a bag that, it, that was older. And I noticed it. Am I a chip expert? No. I just, I like these. So I've had them enough times to know that they're usually one way. And then so... My wife looked at the package and it said, best used by January 1, 2024. Okay, we missed the date or January 4th or something, but it was the beginning of January, that much I remember. And so somehow it didn't get rotated or we kept them too long or they kept them too long. Were they bad? No, I ate the whole bag ultimately. I ate them over about three nights. But, but what I'm saying is that I noticed they were different. Voices are much, much more intimate that people recognize when a voice is right and when it's not. 
And at first when I ate the chips, it was like, ah, these don't aren't these aren't the same. But they were good enough. I ate the whole bag over a few days. So what? You know, and that's all with audio. But now when I want people to, here's the thing. Since I know what the chips are like when they're normal, I recognize that they weren't normal. Is it a big deal? No. Am I going to not buy them? I'm going to still buy them. Now, if they're always like they were this time, then I'd probably switch to something else. Just there's other things that are fresher and I like them better. So that's kind of the same sort of thing that will happen here is that if it's not right, most won't notice. Some will. Sometimes you don't get work and you don't know why you didn't get work. And why did they go with Larry instead of Don? Uh, because Larry overall is doing a better job. Okay. It may not be one thing, but he just sounds warmer. He's putting room tone in. And so he doesn't have this, this blackout sound and he's voicing well. Cool. That gets him some work. I might not even know that I'm missing work because they just don't tell me, well, I liked you except for something sounded a little funny. Nah, that's not how it works. They just go with it. All right, I got to go here for today. Next week, we'll be on same time, same station. Of course, you know, uh, I'm doing this with Heller. I'm doing the Heller Barnes Ask Us Anything, which is more audiobook focused on Tuesdays. So that's on the channel. Be sure to go on YouTube, uh, subscribe, make comments. Send me messages if you have other things you want me to talk about, but I'm doing this every Tuesday. We're talking about Biotech Simplified Live. So be sure to you know tell other people about it, pass it on. If you see it posted someplace and you think it should be posted in some other group, do it. I can't do that sometimes. It depends on the group. Okay, so I hope you have a fantastic week. I look forward to seeing all of you next week. And of course, I'm always excited to see you on the wire. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>